Hi, you guys. Welcome to this live. I hope you're getting used to seeing me on Thursday, logging on whenever you can to come and watch this live. So I want to do a couple quick uh, housekeeping things just to make sure that you know where to find everything and uh, bear with me here. So if you see my screen, the if you've just joined this group, welcome. I'm super excited to have you here. And basically in the discussions, feel free to post any questions or comments that you have. I have some pinned posts that uh, like the welcome post as well as the rules and anything else that's going on. Mm -hmm. But then the other component is the guides. This is where I want to guide you to if you have questions about who I am, what I do, uh, and really my approach to fertility. You can watch the welcome as well as the four secrets, the blueprint to a healthy pregnancy. I have labs for fertility, menstrual cycle 101, miscarriage support, and my lives are all organized down here. And so I'm going to put this one in there as well. And I'm also always adding content here. So I'm adding content. I have some content that I'm recording on birth control and how that's impacting your fertility. Any questions that you have around the menstrual cycle? I don't know what to track. I'm using this to... Post those in the comments because it will really give me an idea of what you guys are looking for in terms of to learn and to understand about your body. And then I'm, uh, of course, going to answer your comment, but it actually allows me to make more videos. So if you have a question, guaranteed that other people have a question, the same question as well. And that's really my goal with this whole fertility group is everybody always shares. And I'm in my messenger, I always see people talking about their miscarriages and, you know, their difficulties that they're experiencing with their period and therefore the difficulties that are experiencing getting pregnant. And the truth is there are so many of us in the same boat. And so we want to connect you guys and we want to make sure that we spread the information of what worked, what doesn't work, and kind of demystify some of the things that are out there. So then we can be very precise with things that are happening in our body. We can take control of our health. We can take control of our fertility journey. We can learn how to trust our body instead of relying on LH strips to tell us when we're menstruating, actually, I'm uh, sorry, when we're ovulating, actually understanding when we're ovulating and when we're not ovulating, understanding why is that happening and how can we correct that? Because there's answers to all of those things. So with that, we are going to continue the nine markers of health. And so I'm going to share my screen one more time, but this time, this is the nine markers of health that I am going to share with you. The things that we have already overcome the things that we have already overcome i'm just going to close that off is let me draw on here Let's see if i can draw on here i should be able to yeah perfect so we did stress last week we talked about nutrition and we talked about digestion so as you can tell there's still lots and lots of uh things left but we're going to talk about movement next because movement is a really important marker of health and it's super important to move for your health and the big frustrations that i see when it comes to exercise is that we don't have enough motivation to do it like we're too tired which is going to tie in with our energy and you're going to see that all of these relate to one another it's not just one pillar that's off and that's it but we're you know too tired to exercise we might not change our exercise routine at all. And that's part of the problem when we're coming into the fertility space. So there's no change to your routine. And um, the other piece is that like, you just don't know, you have no idea what to do. So you don't know, and you just kind of leave that whole thing blank. And what I really want to do is create a piece of awareness for you, if you will, and teach you what you need to do in order to optimize your fertility. So I come from a background of being a competitive athlete. Um, and so, you know, used to compete in CrossFit and exercise used to be a really big part of my life. Now, my relationship with exercise has changed, but the importance of exercise still remains. So we need to move for the body. We need to move. That's, you know, movement is life. There's a lot of blood pumping, heart pumping, uh, sweating, like detoxification, but just 
you know, we need movement in our, in our life. Our bodies were built to move. And so we want to build a routine that works for you. That works in your schedule. We want you to feel confident in your body. We want you to feel strong in your body and the efforts that you're putting in are matching up with the results that you're seeing. And that's really, really important because if you're working out a bunch and you're not seeing any results, that's a really big issue. There's a break in the circuit. There's a break in the message that you're trying to send to your body versus how your body is responding. And it's very rare that the prescription is to do more exercise, okay? In fact, that's probably 0.01% times a prescription, usually, there's a hormonal imbalance or something that's preventing it. And so the mistakes that I see people make, now, if you guys, um, I, if you haven't had a chance to have this download, you can go ahead and throw me in the comments markers of health, and I will get this download to you if uh, you would like to have it. But for the movement, the big kind of mistakes that I see is that you're doing it all by yourself. So you're trying to figure it out on your own. This is just you sat trying to figure it out on your own. Um, you're repeating just what you see somebody else is doing. That's an influencer and that seems to have worked for them. So you assume that this is gonna work for you. So you're not actually you know, doing anything individual. And then um, you're going too hard. So it's either you're going too hard or you're not doing enough. That's that's kind of the, the the two swings in the movement. And so, like I said, exercise is a really important part of health and your health is going to reflect your fertility potential. This is why we're talking about all of these components because it's not just one. It's not just, oh, but I sleep really well, so that's good. Oh, and I'm eating well, but if you're not digesting well and your energy is still low and you still have mood swings and you're under high levels of stress, does it, it's great that you're sleeping and exercising and eating well, but you're still missing a lot of these different pieces. And so my goal is to help you uncover those pieces. So you're no, you're not wondering what's going on. Okay. So what kind of the big ahas for you guys, when it comes to exercise is your exercise needs are going to change depending on where you are in your life. So for females, your exercise needs change for where you are in your cycle. That's how important it is to be in tune with your cycle. So you can change not only your nutrition and your sleep and your stress uh, management techniques throughout your cycle, but you actually need to also change your movement and your exercise routine around your cycle let alone the big events in your life. So for example, puberty, there's a lot of change that happens obviously for both males and females, but you will change what you need to do to help your body navigate through the big stress that it's going through. The same is for fertility and pregnancy and postpartum. Those three are clumped together. And the same goes for your post-menopause, you know, even pre-menopause, menopause, post-menopause. Post there is a hormonal change that dictates how you absorb carbohydrates, how you utilize carbs, proteins, and fats for energy, how you store and build muscle, how you store fat and where you store fat. All those things can uh, will be dictated by what's going on in your hormones. And so it's really silly not to change your routine at all, even though your life and your body is drastically changing, especially if your goals are changing. And the goal when you are trying to get pregnant versus trying to get fit should be very different. In trying to get fit, usually there's a component of wanting to gain some muscle. There's a component of wanting to lose some weight, just look and feel better naked, right? Whereas when you're trying to get pregnant, the goal is to build a system that is vibrant, nutrient rich, and strong, and overflowing with energy, because you're going to grow a human. You're going to grow a human from scratch. You're not trying to lean out. You're not trying to put on muscle mass. You're not trying, although those things may happen, that's not your primary goal. Because leaning out, putting on muscle, you know, doing extra cardio sessions or whatever, yoga sessions here and there, 
it means that you're putting a stress on the system and you're telling it to do, hey, like I need you to get strong. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And so that's very different than I'm going to get ready to grow a human. So yes, we want to build a strong structure, but we don't want to do it in an extent that's going to deplete us. Um, and uh, hi, Crystal, I see that there is a comment and I want to see what blood test to see um, to see what, what, what is it that you're asking, um, to see if you can complete that question for me, I'd love to answer that for you. So back to, in terms of activity and what you need to do. So your primary goal in exercise, when you're getting ready to carry a baby is to build a strong structure, to decrease stress and to nourish your body. Now we can have exercise that's more calming and nourishing to our system versus more depleting. Okay. That's not just talking about diet. I'm talking about exercise and how you choose to move your body and also the intention that you choose to move your body with. So the three most important things that you need to do is number one, you need to include strength training. You need to include strength training. You don't need to do it every day. You need to do about two times a week, maybe three times a week, where you are focusing on building strength. So that means you are lifting weights, you're lifting as heavy as you can for your structure. And you know, you're know you constantly kind of building up to that. And this is again, where I'm gonna recommend that you work with a trainer that knows how to lift weights. So don't just watch YouTube videos and try to figure it out. And if you work, worked with a trainer before and they you didn't like them and they didn't teach you anything, that doesn't mean you don't need a trainer. That means you just need to pick another one. So let's stop um, setting really high expectations for the first person that you meet in your health journey. And just know that sometimes they're not the right person and that's okay. Just move on from that because they, you know, they'll help somebody else. You are just not that person. So I do recommend that you get a strength coach. So you learn how to lift properly because the benefits of lifting weights are, I mean, besides fertility, are really, really high, right? Like from getting a strong skeleton, building more muscle, improving your posture, your metabolism is going to improve, you're going to improve confidence, because now you're standing up taller, you have more muscle mass, you're burning more fat, uh, your blood sugar regulation is much better. And immune system function is better because you're storing more protein, which is where immunoglobulins for immune system, there's a lot, a lot of benefits to strength training. So from the fertility perspective, though, you're building a really strong structure. So think about what you are going to need through the entire pregnancy, not just the first moment where you find out when you're pregnant, right? It's a long haul. You're almost pregnant for an entire year. And so you need to be able to withstand that. You need to have strong hips. You need to have a strong core and strong. When I say core, it's not abs. I'm talking about lower back and obliques and yes, abs, but your abs are going to turn off the more pregnant that you are. And then of course you need that strength throughout labor to be able to help you go through labor, depending on how long that process is going to be. Uh, so number one thing that you need is if you haven't started to include that is strength training. Now you don't need to do a lot. Like I said, three times a week and, you know, 45 minute sessions, you can get a lot in there. I would recommend that you get a trainer to teach you. If you're like, I do not exercise. I do not know how to exercise or at least some sort of a program that's going to help you. Number two, you need to decrease your intensity. You need to need to decrease your intensity. So the hit classes, the spin classes with the really dark rooms and the uh, you know, the bright lights, the disco lights that basically feels like you're going to have a seizure the moment you walk in there. It might be really fun, but what it's doing is actually triggering and stimulating your nervous system. And what we want is a soothed nervous system, not an overstimulating one. When you're trying to grow a baby, there's going to be a lot of stress and the nervous system needs to feel soothed. And that's also going to help to re like store nutrients that you need to uh, have the baby. But the more stressed you are, the more the, like your body can actually shut down ovulation when you're stressed because you're in fight or flight. 
And your system doesn't want to reproduce when you're running away from a bear. It's in fight or flight. And so we don't want our exercise routine to be the thing that's triggering that. We don't want the exercise routine to be triggering our nervous system, our fight or flight system to run away from the bear. We want our exercise routine to feel more soothing. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do any HIIT exercises at all. It's just that I need you to turn down the notch. So if you're used to going at nine out of 10 and hitting, pushing that edge, I need you to go down to like a seven or a six, especially if you are prone to overdoing it in general, over-exercising and pushing yourself. And like when I used to be an athlete, it's really easy for me to go into that state because my body's comfortable there. It remembers it. It doesn't mean it's good for me though. It just remembers it. And so learning how to soothe your nervous system by not overstimulating it and not pressing the gas too hard when it comes to exercise is really, really important. And number three, and this is really simple, but I need you to walk. I need you to do a lot, a lot of walking. And by a lot, I mean that 10,000 to 10 to 12,000 steps a day. And that's really important because it helps to decrease your cortisol. It will also help with blood sugar regulation, especially if you go for walks right after you eat. And then it's going to help you maintain a healthy weight. It's going to help with your circadian rhythm, which is that thing when you wake up in the morning and you look at the sun and it, you know, the sun shoots into your eyes and goes, oh, it's morning. It's time to wake up. It's time to produce cortisol. And if you do that throughout the day and you see that the sun goes up and then the sun, especially if you go in the evening and you see that the sun is going down and there is a change in how much brightness is coming into your eyes, then um, it's going to help to improve your sleep quality. It's going to help to improve that melatonin production, which is a really strong antioxidant and actually can help for some women regulate their period because the period is also right. It's a, on a rhythm. So 10 to 12, 10 to 12,000 steps you need to walk. Now, Crystal, I see a question for the hormones to find out why someone who is doing activities and not seeing a change. So if you're working out and you're not seeing a change, what could be some of the underlying issues? Great question, Crystal. So for everybody, um, I don't want to say it's different, but the most common things that we see, there's usually a thyroid issue. Um, it could also be uh, an adrenal issue. So cortisol, there's a lot of inflammation. It could be a blood sugar dysregulation. So your insulin sensitivity is off. And so it's not even so much that your the exercise is not working. It's that as soon as you eat certain foods, it's triggering a stress response. It's triggering a blood sugar regulation issue. And therefore you are not able, you're just gaining that weight quickly, really far, uh, you know, really quickly back. The components, so I always like to take it a little bit deeper than like, oh, it's a thyroid issue. Oh, it's a adrenal issue. So your cortisol, your stress levels are really high because everybody's stress levels are really high right now, right? Like, and they have been for a while. And so it's learning how to be more resilient through that, but also understanding, well, why is my thyroid off? Or why are my hormones? Why am I not ovulating? And the why, and there's labs that will tell you what is going on in your body. And there's labs that tell you why those things are going on in your body. So the what is going on in your body is usually your typical blood work, even like hormone test analysis, uh, you know, like a urine Dutch test, if you've done those by um, urine metabolites in terms of how your body is breaking down. Those are all the what's like, what is going on in your body? So, oh, okay, there's a thyroid that's off, but then the why would be, what's your gut function doing? Are you absorbing the foods that you are eating? Do you have bacterial overgrowth? Do you not have enough good bacteria, which is where we produce 80% of our serotonin, 80% of our immune system is in the gut. And we detoxify through the gut. That's going to impact your hormone imbalance. So doing a gut function test could be really, really beneficial to see what's going on and why you are not losing weight, even though you're doing the activities. And environmental toxins is a really, really big one. So mold is something that's really prevalent. So if you have a hard time uh, losing weight, if you have a bunch of cellulite 
even if you're not really overweight, but you have a bunch of cellulite, you have a lot of brain fog and fatigue, mold is a really big culprit of that. You can have heavy metals, you can have some other environmental chemicals and toxins that your body is simply just protecting right? It's protecting in the fat cells. And because the detoxification pathways are not working well, then it's it's not allowing to release those uh, components. It's not allowing to release the fat that has all the toxins stored. And that is stressing your system out. And that's what's causing extra stress. That's what's causing the thyroid and the blood sugar dysregulations. So I know that that's not a really simple uh, answer uh, in terms of what is it what kind of tests you can do, but the common ones that are the why is environmental toxins and some gut function issues that are preventing you from being able to detoxify, drain well, absorb your nutrients, and then causing that unnecessary stress and imbalancing your hormones. So if is there a big difference between a cortisol blood versus a 24-hour urine, um, urine with cortisol? Typically, it uh, you want to get a circadian rhythm. So you want to get a measurement first thing in the morning, you want to get it. So you don't want to collect 24 hours and do an average because that's going to give you a really poor answer. Uh, and even with a blood, uh, you could do it first thing in the morning, but really what you want to do is get a rhythm of your circadian rhythm. So I use the Dutch uh, precision analytical hormone panel and I get my patients to do it's uh, as soon as they wake up, it's two hours after awaking. And then it's uh, around 4 p.m., like, you know, two uh, around dinner time, and then right before they go to bed. And if you have insomnia or you're waking up frequently in the middle of the night, I get you to take a sample in the middle of the night as well. And that way we get a whole picture of what's happening throughout the day with your cortisol, as opposed to an average, because you might have really high cortisol in the afternoon but really low at nighttime. And so if you're just crashing and you're having these really big swings, you're not going to feel very good. And also we want to know why, why is there such big swings? Or you might be just low across the board, right? Or you might be high across the board. So it's really important to kind of get that whole overview as opposed to uh, just one just one message. So I hope, Crystal, that answers your questions. So to wrap up on fertility and exercise, the big three things, number one, you want to make sure that you are including strength training. Number two, you want to decrease that intensity, especially if you already have other stressors. We don't need to have exercise be part of the stressor. And then number three, you want to make sure that you're walking. So if you don't take anything away from this, just start walking more. I always like having a tracking device of sorts, whether it's an aura ring or an Apple watch or something. Um, walk, 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 because it's going to benefit, uh, benefit you quite a bit. Summary, you want to change it up. You do want to change up your routine. Change up your routine from getting ready for pregnancy versus trying to get lean, trying to lose weight. One of the biggest mistakes that I've seen, if you've been following me around, you know that dieting before you get pregnant is one of the worst things that you can do. So you do not want to diet. That's not bueno in the same with exercise. You don't want to push your body really hard right before you're trying to get pregnant because it's stress. It's, it, it's rising up your stress. Um, if you don't know where to start, get help honestly get help. It's a tool, like don't be afraid to invest into yourself, to get a trainer, get, uh, you know, get a gym membership or, or something that's going to teach you how to do it. Remember, it's a skill. Once you learn how to do it, it's like riding a bike. You'll never forget. You might need some accountability, but accountability is different versus learning. And so learning might be getting a trainer versus accountability might be getting a membership to the gym, but don't ever feel like you need to do things on your own. I think that's the biggest mistake that we make is we feel like I have to try to figure it out on my own. It's like, no, you don't just because one person didn't help you, you know, or just because even three people didn't help you, you will stumble upon somebody who will, you just have to keep looking and understand that intention behind your action is everything. So when you come into an exercise routine and you say, my intention is to build a strong, uh, well-nourished and, you know, kind of resilient body versus I want to lean out. I want to look, you know, that intention is going to be very different. And so you want to make sure that you set the right intention 
for your exercise routine when you're starting to get pregnant. Because like I said, one of the biggest mistakes that I see is that women will deplete themselves before they're trying to get pregnant. And they'll deplete that either through diet, through exercise, through stress, lack of sleep. And then if there's any digestive issues on top of that, it's just it's like there's a lot of depletion and it makes it really, really hard for your body then to grow a human. Remember, it's such a hard thing for the system to do. And so if we're tired, depleted, uh, and on the verge of a nervous breakdown, the it's it's going to be really hard for the for the body to build a human from scratch, basically, right? Because it, it wants a nice, soothe, healthy, nourished environment. And the way that we do that is soothe ourselves and nourish ourselves and create that environment within ourselves. So the body literally has nothing left to do. It's overflowing with energy and it wants that energy to come out and make a baby. Okay. I hope you guys found that helpful. Crystal, thank you so much for your questions. That was great. And um, next week, we're going to, we're going to tackle one more, one more topic uh, in the nine markers of health. If you would like to see this nine markers of health and you want to just go ahead and uh, message comment markers of health, and then I'll throw that in for you. But like I said, there's a couple things that are left. We've done stress, we've done movement, we've done nutrition, and we've done diet. So there is uh, sleep, hydration, energy, mood, and the menstrual cycle. So still quite a bit that we are going to cover over next week. What I'd love to know is what was the most valuable thing that you learned from today. Go ahead and throw it in the comments. Uh, what was the most valuable and most interesting thing that you learned from this live? And I hope to see you next week. Uh, thanks so much for being here, you guys. And until then.